Ian Warden, the former Labour MP and brilliant political interviewer, once told me that to understand parliamentary politics in the UK, I needed to understand that they all want to be the Prime Minister. <laughs> and by they, he meant all MPs. With the number of Tories challenging to be our next Prime Minister now in double figures, with some real no-hopers amongst them, it seems Brian was right. But do we really think the next Prime Minister of this country should be chosen by a bunch of upper middle class male white old duffers <laughs> who are disproportionately the members of the Conservative Party today? At one time, there was more than two and a half million people in the Conservative Party. Today, membership is down to around 100,000. If that's democracy in the 21st century, God save us. Instead, maybe we should have an American-style primary whereby voters, not the declining number of Tory party members, get to make the decision. Well, compared to the old days, I mean, this is relatively democratic. I mean, the party uh, ele leader election rules were instituted by a chap called Humphrey Barclay in 65. But before that, you had sort of Lord Salisbury um, calling in <laughs> MPs and saying, who do you want, Wab or Howard? You know, uh, and it was chosen like that. And, it, it, you know, I think yeah, there, was the a, there was the so-called magic circle of Etonians fr from which a leader would emerge until 1965. Doesn't that still happen? They still happen. Well, it is now. It's still a magic circle of Etonians, <laughs> arguably with Rory and Boris but, Bertanning. But there are 120,000 members. I agree. You know, it's a sort of election by gammon, maybe of gammon. Oh, no, that's a terrible <laughs> thing to say. No, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. No, but surely, yeah. what, what, my, my that means you but think you your say, brothers. That you, means you think your brothers gammon. Don't be silly. You just joking. said it. Yes. But, but I'm just remaining resonantly off Where's message that as I'm not in, as yes. I'm no yes. longer yes. in yes. politics. Yes. But, <laughs> well, now you've retired from politics. <laughs> yeah. That was quick. <laughs> the fastest political career <laughs> in Europe. No, but you're um, right. I mean, to choose the, uh, you know, the, the leader of 66 million people by 120,000 old white men in the South East is a joke, but it's the joke the system yeah. we have. But we, we do, I mean, I, it would be better to go back to the system whereby the MPs chose, because at least they are representing somebody. These but they do, they whittle 000, it down to a 22. No, they whittle it down to two and then, then it's left to the membership. And, we all, know, and we all know if Boris gets to the last well, two, he'll win it. He'll win it, because the, the membership is more right-wing than, 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 than most of society. I have to say, before we get to the whole kind of complicated business, that I, I, I'm finding it hard to get past the range of runners and riders. And I just would like you to take a look at what the Conservative Party has to offer us as candidates for Prime Minister. To have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. Fairness. For me, that word means cutting taxes for the lowest paid. Hi, this is Rory. I'm now in the uh, slightly absurd setting of Kew Gardens. I'm running to be the next Prime Minister because I profoundly believe that we need a leader for the future, not just for now. I'm ready to deliver Brexit. I'm ready to take Britain out of the European Union. I've got the steeliness to deliver that, the heart and the courage to do it and get the strong team that will be needed to deliver it. I think we need the right type of leadership. You're know, someone that can promote unity, that can bring people together. My um, own absolute core is a combination of being a decisive person who gets things done. There are three reasons that I need to be Prime Minister. I don't care how you make We've the got choice. A new leader. But isn't that the scariest apprenticeship lineup you've <laughs> ever seen in your life? I mean, Honestly, is this the best party can do? No, you're being a bit unfair there. I mean, no, not at all, mate. You're being a bit unfair. There's obviously some no-hopers. There's one or two people who've done quite good jobs and quite big jobs. But 
to hand, as I, which is the argument I'm making, to hand who, which of those becomes the Prime Minister? Yeah, how would you do it? Because you'd have a plan. It's, it's, you can't do it now. No, no, no. I mean, in the future. Are you asking the electorate? Because we don't they, have a presidential system. No, we can't. They, they will obviously, if you happen to be a Labour or Green supporter, what, what party are you in this, hour, this, this afternoon? Still with change, I haven't decided. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ask me then you will vote for the clinker, won't you? So just for the purpose of debate, Nick Ferrari stands. Right, everybody vote for oh, Nick oh, Ferrari, because then they're left with... No, no, no. But then they're left with the clinker. It can't work, can it? Well, it won't. I, I it won't. It, it because, can't work from where we are now. No, but, but you could. Have, you, you've got to have a better system. You'll always vote for the idiot. But you've got <laughs> to. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's but what we will. would vote yeah, for. Yeah, I know. But you uh, would. Yeah. They, they, they did it before, and they got Sarah Wollaston, who actually has gone off to change UK. UK. She, she so, stood in one constituency in Devon. Yeah. Got, as an independent. And she was the local... No, she, she, stood as, she stood as a Tory. And then she changed, didn't she? But she was the local doctor. And yeah, they, they took her as they wanted oh, her because yeah. she That's was the it. local the doctor. That was the I, primary I system. And, and the yeah. primary system. But, but my, my yeah. point is that the, the problem with the primary system is that in our system, uh, as point, people have made the point, that... The president gets elected by universal ballot, so the primary system sort of makes some sense there. But the problem for us is that if you have a primary for the leadership of the Conservative Party, where does that person get their authority from? Is it from a ballot of all sorts of people who are not members of the Conservative Party? Or is it from their MPs? I mean, I sort of see where you want to go here, what? but it doesn't... You'd, it doesn't make sense no, in our I, system. What I'm arguing is we've got the worst of all worlds now. You, you're handing the decision for who our next Prime Minister is to a bunch of, as you say, old, white... But surely no, the answer to that... Men from the South. Surely the answer to that, no, you Greg, said it. Surely the answer to that <laughs> is that the Conservative Party <laughs> itself, at, like the Labour Party, has to revive itself so it has a wider range of members. That's the answer to your problem, not to give the decision but you to somebody are not, else. But, but there's no suggestion, I think, that, the, that you're going to get a massive... I mean, if you go back to 1940s and 19, early 1950s, you had enormous numbers of people in political parties. Agreed, you haven't got it anymore. You're not going to get it. But we sure. Well, my first point is I'm astonished that so many people have put themselves forward for this yes. job because I w if I was in this party, an MP, I wouldn't put myself forward right now if you paid me triple my salary to pick up this mess because I don't see anyone that's going to pick up the situation as it is today and come out of it particularly well. Um, I agree with you in the sense of it does seem bizarre that 130 or 140,000 people or whatever it is can choose who the Prime Minister is because you mentioned um, authority and whoever gets elected they're going to be constantly having their authority undermined because of that exact reason. And I don't understand where and how we can, whoever becomes the leader, and by the way, I do think that there's some good ones in there. I think it's a bit harsh to say that they're all mm. numpsies. I think there are a few good ones in there. Um, <laughs> Could but, you tell us who, though? Which ones are the... Well, I don't, I don't I, mind... I mean, your numpty list will be interesting. Well, no, I, I don't mind um, James Cleverly. He, he very recently came out um, as, with his um, hat in the ring. I don't mind Jeremy Hunt because I respect his business acumen from outside of politics. Um, I think, I know I'm going to stand controversial maybe, but Sajid Javid, I don't mind yeah, him. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's as I'm easy as just, and I also I think to give them some credit, people like Rory, you know, he's out and about doing his Twitter mm. lives and his But you say about authority, what happens is we have a leadership election and then the new leader immediately wants a mandate, so bloody calls the general have election. Yeah. Have, you my heard, have you heard the breaking news? What? Yeah, Chris Grayling had a grow, but he threw his ring in the hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. If <laughs> Chris Grayling declared to be leadership, he'd make that final That we would lose, Trevor. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, yeah. Look, I'll just say to all my friends who are on that list, it's a joke, mate. <laughs> <laughs>